Today, we're talking about diabetes and eye health. I'll be interviewing Dr. S. Perez, who's a board-certified ophthalmologist and retina specialist, and we're talking about all things related to diabetes, eye health, and what you can do to improve your eye health with your medical team. This video is sponsored by Regeneron's Look to Your Future campaign. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, if you are type 1 diabetic, then you need to be watching this interview. Today I'm here with Dr. Shanika Esperes, board certified ophthalmologist and retina specialist, and we're talking about diabetes and vision. So often, you know, we talk about diabetes and blood sugar management or diabetes and insulin, diabetes and the general stuff that's extremely important. But what we don't often talk about is vision. And vision can be affected by multiple things, including diabetes. As all of you might know, I've had diabetes for, I think, 11 years now. And I've been fortunate enough to not have any sort of vision impacts. And I go for my checkups regularly. But it's a conversation that we don't have often enough. Thank you for joining today. You can introduce yourself, say a little about yourself. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Chris, for inviting me today. Uh, like Chris mentioned, I'm Shanika Esperaz. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist, and I also focus on the retina, which is the back of your eye. And that's where a lot of problems from diabetes can arise in the eye. Uh, so just like Chris mentioned, I highly encourage anybody with diabetes, type one, type two, to keep up with their routine eye exams because you could have great control of your blood sugar, but you may be having silent uh, disease in the back of your eye in your retina. Let's talk about that. In, in terms of disease, eye disease, what is diabetic eye disease? You know, we hear about it a lot and, you know, watch, be careful of your eyes. You know, we always hear that, mm -hmm. but it's such general warning and it kind of almost creates more fear because I truly believe fear is kind of born out of lack of education in a specific department. So what is diabetic eye disease? For sure. So diabetic eye disease, there's another name for it. It's also called diabetic retinopathy. And this occurs when a patient has high blood sugars for a long period of time. What happens is high blood sugars damage the blood vessel linings throughout our whole body. That's why diabetes can affect our heart, our kidneys, our brain, our nerve endings. When this occurs in your eye, it can affect the blood vessels in the back of your eye that supply the center of your vision. So what occurs is these blood vessels in the back of your eye can start to leak and swell, and this can cause blurry vision at the center of your vision and sometimes blindness. It's not something that you necessarily feel, but it might be something that starts to cause some vision changes. Okay, so in terms of uh, having diabetes and vision impacts, is it more towards type one or more towards type two? Is there a specific type of diabetes that is more likely to get it? So that's a great question. So both patients with type one and type two can get similar eye disease from diabetes because it's the same kind of pathway or mechanism, right? So high blood sugars affecting the blood vessels and causing damage over a long period of time. Naturally, patients with type 1 diabetes might be at a slightly higher risk for diabetic eye disease simply because they've had diabetes possibly for a longer period of time. So patients who have diabetes or high blood sugars for over 10 years are at a higher risk for these problems in the eye. Okay, so let's talk about those numbers because you know what, about 5 to 10% of people with diabetes have type 1. The rest are presumably type 2, either diagnosed or undiagnosed. Um, for, for a type one who is, I, I hate saying well-managed because the condition is not good nor bad, you know, for mm -hmm. a type one that spends the majority of their time and range over a long period of time in a, in a good time and range, you know, over 80%, A1Cs are deemed good. Is there a likelihood of developing a vision, impacted vision, is that lessened because of their care? For sure. So anything that you do to help the health of your overall body. So I tell my patients, anything you're doing to help your heart health and your brain health is going to help your visual health to your vision and save your vision. So anything that a patient can do from, um, you know, maintaining a, a, or getting to their target A1C, maintaining a healthy blood pressure, uh, blood cholesterol, reduce and quitting smoking, um, maintaining an active and healthy lifestyle is going to help reduce their risk of vision problems. 
I love the question about A1C because I have some patients who come to me with very advanced stages of diabetic eye disease, yet their A1C is great. It's you know in the five to seven range and they're meeting all their targets with their blood sugar. Um, and so what I tell these patients is your A1C level now is going to help the future health of your eyes. But what we're dealing with is the you know five to 10 years before this that you've had these high blood sugars. Um, and like we just mentioned, it's not just the blood sugar, it's in the whole package, the cholesterol, the blood pressure. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't just focus on the A1C. That's a great kind of um, grade for how you've been doing in the last few months. Uh, but I think if a patient, um, you know, has a overall understanding of their overall health, they can really empower themselves to take control of their visual health too. I'm so glad you said that because so many people with diabetes tend to think life is just about diabetes management. Now, don't attack me, people, when I say that, but I need you to understand diabetes management is one extremely important tool of managing your condition, but you also have something else to manage, and that's called your life. So you need to make sure that you're healthy outside of that in terms of nutrition, exercise. Are you smoking or drinking? Are you doing the things that are helping you move forward? Are you kind of holding yourself back with some of these habits that can you know, negatively or positively impact your health and in terms of your vision. So I like that you made that differentiation. It's almost like building a house. A hammer will, will do a lot of the job, but it won't do the entire job. So you can't rely on A1C alone to be healthy. Just because you have good numbers doesn't mean you have fully full spectrum good health practices. That's something you'd agree with? For sure. I, I love that analogy. And I'm a very, I'm a competitive and uh, type one uh, uh, type A, sorry, person. And I, you know, like targets and I like numbers. So I, you know, it's good that we have the A1C as kind of a goal, but exactly. We don't want to lose sight of everything else around us in our whole lifestyle. Absolutely. We need multiple goals and it's a multifaceted approach to have that, that health marker of uh, reducing possibility. There's no guarantees, right? For sure. Uh, like I mentioned, there's patients who have great A1Cs, but still have advanced eye disease and they may not know it. And so that kind of goes back to that point that you mentioned that you keep up with your routine eye exams, even though, you know, your eyes are doing great. Um, so I always encourage patients to come see an eye doctor for a dilated eye exam at least once a year. Some patients do need, um, you know, eye exams more than once a year, just depending on what we see. Correct me if I'm wrong. You said something, you know, uh, a lot of people undiagnosed. A lot of times we tend to treat topical symptoms or we treat things that we feel. And if we don't feel it, we think it's okay. And I'm sure you encounter patients like that. And I see that all the time. I was that a very long time ago until I took my health more seriously. Aren't there like millions of people walking around with like beginning stages of, you know, eye disease? Right, right. And you, I think you hit a great point where we treat things when we see it, when we feel it, right? Um, and I tell my patients that, uh, you know, I'm seeing problems in their eye, we might have to start treatment, even though right now you see great and you're not having any eye pain. Um, I do the analogy to somebody with uh, cholesterol plaques in their blood vessels, you know, you may not be having a heart attack, but those plaques are large enough to potentially cause a heart attack. And we don't want to get you to that stage. So we, you know, put a stent in and, you know, get you on medications and things like that. And so the same goes for your eyes. You don't want to wait until you're having symptoms of potential vision loss before uh, taking control of your health and coming to see your eye doctor. Now, identifying those markers, are there certain demographics that get hit a little bit harder? Because we know in the different minority groups, me being, you know, having a disability, also being disabled, I tend to have a few different um, uh, health issues that can come along. Same thing with when we go into the African-American population or any other type of culture or even gender. Do you see there's higher prevalence in diabetic eye disease in a certain uh, population? Yes, I've seen higher risk for diabetic eye disease and complications of diabetes in the eye in patients from certain ethnic groups. So um, African-Americans, um, Latinos, and uh, American Indian patients as well. Um, besides ethnic, different ethnic groups, also patients who uh, have a history of smoking, a history of high blood pressure, and a history of high cholesterol as well. 
And that's why it's so important that like all of these different minority groups get this information because we know access in the healthcare space can be difficult, especially where we are in today's society. So access is a big issue and at least giving the information to these groups and these communities, doing the best we can because the biggest resource we have is being resourceful. And that's the whole point of this talk today is to make sure that we're giving the information because maybe someone who never really thought about vision, like, oh, maybe I should go get checked. If they're able to catch that at the beginning stage, that increases the chances of uh, reducing further complications, correct? Right, right. I think getting exactly just what you said, getting the information out there um, or finding, you know, where do I even find resources about uh, diabetes and my eye health, I think is a great start um, because I think the more educated patients from a variety of backgrounds are, the more that they can empower themselves to take care of themselves, take care of their families. I really encourage uh, patients with diabetes or living with low vision to check out Regeneron's looktoyourfuture.com website. It has a lot of great resources for patients who may be at risk for diabetic eye disease, uh, how to take control of their health, how to reduce their risk factors for diabetic retinopathy, and how to have a productive conversation with their eye doctor. Now, you mentioned people being at risk. Let's bring up the real, the real issues, the, the stigmas. There are huge stigmas on diabetes. You know, like every day I go on social media, you see people put their A1C in their bio, or they're like, it's, I, and I get it, it's a point of pride. You know, it is, it's an accomplishment. And not everyone has the same scenario, circumstance, privilege, whatever you want to call it, to be able to get to that point at a certain point in their life. But there's a huge stigma on people who are already experiencing complications in diabetes, especially in vision. And it's almost like a point of pride or, you know, the ego where, you know, you don't want to talk about it. Are there things people who are experiencing complications with vision can do to get better? Or is it just, you know, at that point, it's, it's what it is. That's a, a great and question. So, so important. I think uh, for folks that don't have diabetes or even healthcare providers, I mean, um, you know, we're not the ones living with the condition and it's a chronic condition that a patient has to look manage for the rest of their life. And everybody exactly is at a different point in their management for diabetes and has access to different resources. And so, you know, um, it's, it's easy to say, oh, okay, this is what you have. This is what you need to do, you know, go do it. No, it's, it's about a, a relationship with the patient, getting them the education they need. Um, I would encourage patients who are struggling with their vision to speak with their eye doctor, come in for an eye exam. Don't just assume, uh, read something, you know, on Dr. Google and assume, okay, you know, there's nothing that can be done. Um, you know, I still have one other good eye, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to ignore this or, you know, I can treat it at home. I, I definitely recommend coming in to see your eye doctor, have a dilated eye exam, uh, come in with questions, um, to, you know, to ask about what you can do and, and your physician can have the conversation about what your physician can do for you as well. Um, if a patient is having uh, any symptoms of blurred vision, distortions at the center of their vision, uh, blind spots or patches missing at the center of the vision, I recommend, you know, seeing their eye doctor soon. Uh, okay, so you covered my next question and like some of uh the signs and symptoms, which is, that's the most common. Are there any other uh, symptoms to look out for that are not so obvious? So the tough part of diabetes is that a lot of the times patients can have diabetic retinopathy and not have symptoms. Uh, so there, you know, it can be silent in the eye. And once it becomes more advanced, that's when you might be noticing blurred vision. Um, rarely would you have eye pain associated with uh, diabetic eye disease. So again, it's mostly visual type symptoms. And sometimes I've had patients tell me that they've noticed their vision can fluctuate with their day-to-day -day blood sugars. So some patients get kind of intermittent blurred vision if their blood sugars are really high or really low. Um, but signs of more kind of progressive or advanced disease are when it's not going away. It's going on for hours or days. I've also heard that as well. Some people who have those temporary, like acute vision distortions, you know, related to uh, severe spikes or severe drops. So that's interesting that you mentioned that. Now, in terms of signs and symptoms, we have, we have our normal like annual checkup. That's like the basic 
is there anything else? You, should you just make an appointment with the doctor and that's it? Or is there anything else you should do? So I recommend keeping up appointments with all your doctors because it's kind of a complete, uh, you know, overall health. The health of your whole body is going to affect the health of your eyes. So I recommend keeping up your appointments and keeping up with your medications and monitoring your blood pressure and your blood sugar. Uh, so your primary care doctor, your endocrinologist, along with your eye doctor, um, maintaining a healthy, active lifestyle, uh, reducing, including smoking. Um, those are all things that patients can do on their side of things to empower themselves to take care of their health. So are there any other resources that you would suggest for our community to get a hold of? You know, we know we have to go to our doctor and all that, but what other resources can you suggest for people outside of this interview so that they have that take home information, so to speak? So I would recommend checking out Regeneron's Look to Your Future website. It's a great online resource with uh, just information that you can digest and read at home, learn about your risk for diabetic eye disease, learn how to reduce your risk for diabetic eye disease and questions that you should bring when you see your eye doctor. I think reading as much as you can, um, you know, not just Dr. Google again, but uh, talking with your friends or family members who also have diabetes, uh, you know, how is their experience going to the eye doctor? I think the more open we are about the conditions or concerns that we have, the better that it will be for uh, your overall eye health, again, taking care of yourself, taking care of your family. Awesome. I love that. Doing your due diligence as a patient, becoming your own advocate so that you are not diagnosing yourself. That's extremely important. You're not diagnosing or prescribing for yourself. You are making informed decisions or bringing up questions to ask your professional medical team so that you can make the best possible decisions for your own management. So I love that. Looktoyourfuture.com for anyone who needs more information. Please check that out. Take your vision seriously, take your diabetes management seriously, and overall, just make sure you focus on improving your quality of life, and that does include your health and your vision. Thank you so much for coming on here again. I really appreciate you and your time. Thank you for giving our community so much support and information so that we can live our best lives, and uh, we appreciate healthcare professionals like yourself. Thank you so much, Chris. This is my pleasure. We'll talk soon. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you all later.